Hello guys and gals, welcome back. Some of you have been asking for a more detailed video on how to put chords to a vocal or melody. If you didn't already know, I have done a video on a beginner's hack or trick, if you will, on how to chord any vocal or melody. Card hopefully on the screen or link in the description. But seeing as we did vocals to MIDI last week, instead of pure guesswork, or shall I say educated guesswork, let's look into how we can use some of that MIDI to our advantage and take a deeper dive into chord decisions. So, disclaimer number one, chord progressions are actually quite genre dependent. Believe it or not, chord progressions are not a fundamental must-have in music. Under the great big umbrella term of dance music, some of the subgenres just don't use them at all. Typically, the more tougher genres, like techno, those are less likely to have progressions in them. Whereas the subgenres, which are a little bit more chilled, like deep house, melodic house, some trance, for example, those are much more likely to have them. And as for the many hybrid genres, like, for example, tech house, those are also a hybrid in musical approach. Many of those will, for example, use chords in the breaks, but then not in the drops. The advice in this video is going to be pretty universal. If you need chords, then you should learn something. Okay, so disclaimer number two. When we talk about chords, we don't always mean literal chords as they would be painted out like this. I mean, you might do that in a verse, or this might be just the way you paint your structure to work out the chords that you want, but we don't always mean literally making chords like this. For example, if I decided I was happy with those chords, I could then just program a bass using the root notes of those chords, like this, and this could be my entire track, just a bass and vocal. this track would still have a chord progression. In this case, these are implied chords because between the vocal and the bass, there is harmony created. And because the bass is moving on different root notes, we are insinuating a progression. So in other words, tracks don't have to have an instrument playing literal chords for there to be chords in a track. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so when it comes to deciding on chords for a melody, let me first of all say the aim is not to chord every note of the melody. Our first problem anyway is that we don't have all the correct notes of the melody. This is the AI guess, so we're not working with the best information, are we? But here's what the AI got for Tasia's melody in Overdrive. Not too bad. Now here's the real notes it should have got. Obviously, the tech will get better with time, but as you can see right now, the vocal inflections confuse it somewhat. But even if it was perfect and we chorded all those notes, it would sound something like this. <laughs> Not the best dance riff in the world, is it? And it's not too bad, actually. <laughs> but you get the idea. We're not chording every note. Okay, so back in the real world, we're going to have to clean up the AI MIDI as best as we can. And there's a couple of steps to that. So last week, we deemed the overdrive vocal to be in F sharp minor was our best guess. So the first thing we need to do is get this back into A, because it's a minor, and we count the number of steps it takes to get there. So in our case, it's one, two, three. Those F sharps are now on A. And we're going to assume the minor guess was correct. So we're going to delete every note that doesn't land on a white note, which in our case is these. So that's a little neater. But now we have some neater MIDI. We need to decide which notes are worth chording. Melodies have strong notes and passing notes. And it's kind of up to us to decide what is a strong note. It could be down to the lyric. It could be down to its rhythmic placements, or it could just be whichever part you think is the hookiest. If you're really new to this, your safest bet right now is to rely on those home note guesses that we made last week. 
So if you remember, we thought this note might be one because it stays there for a long time and the end of phrase notes, if you remember which were F sharps. So we're going to focus mainly on these two notes for our chord decisions for now. Right, let's get into some chords then. I'm going to drag the melody down onto our chord track. In this case, I've just got a simple house pluck. And the first thing we need to do, remember we moved up from F sharp and we counted three to get to A. So we need to do the opposite for our synth. We need to go minus three on the transpose. And the reason we do that is now, even though we don't know anything about F sharp minor, we know that now any chords we program in on the white notes will fit in F sharp minor. So how do we decide on our chords? Well, first, let me just delete everything we classed as a passing note. Remember, these were our strong notes and this one. So, just going to be quite ruthless. And it was a repeated vocal phrase anyway. So, let's make it a four bar progression. A good majority of tracks use the same chord progression throughout anyway. So, here are the strong melody notes that we are going to support. Is a kind of term I like to use. And I'm going to use what I call reverse extensions. So remember how chords are extended upwards, like that kind of thing. We're going to do the opposite. We're going to take our melody note and extending downwards, press one, miss one, press one, miss one. That will give us our chord options for that melody note. Nice and simple. Now to start with, let's just do one chord per bar which is pretty typical. So let's look at our first bar. This is the only note we need to support. And another reason we use A for A minor is because the alphabet is our note numbers. A, B, C, D, F, G is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have note two here. So your first option is to assume the melody note is note one of the chord, and we could just build it like this. But we have a problem here. Regular viewers of the channel will know I don't advise new musicians try to use chord two in a minor key or chord seven in a major key. Just write those off until you've got a little bit more experience. So let's look at the alternatives. Let's make our first extension downwards. That gives us this one. So we miss one, we press one. That gives us a G, that's seven. Our next option would be five. So for bar one, our first option is either seven or five. Let's keep those there. So for bar two, we can choose to either support this note or this note. I'm going to pick this one because this is kind of the, remember that we chose this one as the home note and we've already done this one. So this will give us some other options. So this is note one. So we can either choose chord one or look at our reverse extension. So we got F, which is six or four. You can see right there why the 164 trick works from my other video. So bar two can either be one, six, or four. And for bar three, again, we have to pick between these two. I'm going to pick this one because this is just before bar four. So we can always just do the same for bar four here. Pick one of these. That is almost just resolving over to bar four. So I'm going to class this note as on bar four. I'm going to class this note as in bar three. So for bar three, we have the same options. Seven and five. So there's our chord options for this melody. Now there's no rules here. We can use four chords, two chords, one chord, as you know. <laughs> if you want to keep this really simple, we could just make it a two chord progression. Chord seven, chord one, chord seven, chord one. We know those will fit. Put these on the white notes. Let me just program a quick rhythm here. If you want to know about rhythms, I did a video on house rhythms. Kind of applies to a few other genres as well. But here's our first chord progression for that vocal, seven and one. Oops, let me put that in a lower octave.
perfect. There's no problem with that. There's one idea. Let's expand that idea. Remember, chord five was an option here. Six and four were also an option here. So we could do this. This would be five, six, seven, and one. Also good. So two options there to chord that vocal. Let's try another. Let's try a vocal with a little bit more complexity to it. We guessed this one as E minor last week. Here's what the virtual is made of it first. Oh, this was the one that got the eyes missing. But it gets it the second time. So I'm just going to put that there. We know this is a repeated phrase. So we'll do four bars again. This is clearly a misstep. So let's clean up. We said it was E minor last week. So let's move these E's onto A. That's five upwards. And we delete all the notes that are not on the white notes. And luckily that's just that one. So that's nice and clean. We move this down onto our chord synth. And I'm going to compensate our transpose minus five. So this should play back in tune now. Okay, this is clearly nonsense. <laughs> Let's pick some strong notes. I think this is a really easy choice. That lands there. I'm going to ignore this. Tears. On the beat there, that's good. From these eyes. I'm going to leave those because if we look at our options for this melody, look what happens. She's already painted the chord for us. We were on note five. She then sings note one and three. So I'm just going to say this is already going to be chord one for this first bar. Let's say we start here. Here we go. Second note is note four. So we can either have chord four or not chord two. We can have chord seven. So this is going to be chord four or seven for bar two, the elite. Now, bar three, we are on note six. So we can have chord six. We can have chord four. And we can't have chord two. So six or four. Just quickly, if we look at the notes of chord six, you can see these will line up. So six is looking strongest for this bar. And then this resolves back to one. So our options are chord one. You know by now, one, six, or four. So we've already decided one here. This is either four or seven, six and four, one, six, or four. So if I was going to do four progression here, we could go one, seven, let's just make that chord seven. Then what would we do? We could go four and six, I think we'll go, which is that. There's six, that is our chord for chord six. Uh, let's move this down the octave. 
How do these sound? Great. Those are great. Let me put a rhythm in here. Let me change the octave of these. This is too high. Yep, that completely works. Okay, to wrap up, I wanted to show you a track I've already made. It uses that hybrid approach we talked about earlier, where we don't change chords, and then we do. <laughs> so the verse is entirely chordless. It's just bass and vocal, and the bass is staying on the one. We don't change chords at all. We don't even imply a chord change. I will not deny Hear that bass is not moving. I remember the lies and how you fooled me. And then we'll change for the chorus. I'm not that girl anymore. Here we go. So as you can hear, that's kind of an arrangement decision to build tension in the verse and then release it for the chorus by letting those chords move. One option you might have. I also wanted to go over the chord decisions in the chorus because this is a slightly more advanced way of looking at things. Up until now, we've been treating those melody notes as if they were just part of the initial three notes of the chord triad. Now, let me show you the chords I used here because they don't necessarily line up as simply as the examples we first looked at. So for this first bar, I chose chord six. As you can see, we extend downwards. That would indeed be chord six. So that one's a rather simple one, but she lands on note one here, and I'm on chord seven. Now, why does that sound okay? It's because if we make our extensions even further, you'll see she's landed on the ninth of chord seven. So I've treated that melody as an extension of the chord, not part of the main triad. So this might be your next step. Instead of treating melodies as if they're part of the initial triad, you can start extending further downwards and treating them as extensions. Now you wouldn't do this all the time. Melodies that land on extensions aren't traditionally very strong but it's fine if it matches the emotion or the lyrics, or if it's a question and answer scenario that you can resolve later. Just read the room, read the track, go with the emotion. Don't use something because you think it's clever. Anyway, moving on for the third chord of the bar. She's landed on note seven. I've gone back to chord one. So obviously seven over chord one. That means our chord one is now a seventh chord. So she's fine to land there. It's also fine to have that a little bit of extension tension <laughs> because she does eventually resolve her melody on the one. You see the one finishes off here when she says love of yesterday. yesterday. Day is on one. So any tension we build up here with extensions gets resolved here. So this is a four bar progression mostly but we do our own question and answer thing with the progression itself here.
I'll just run you through the rest. This chord one again is a strange one. She lands on that note two. So this makes her on the ninth of the chord. So she's on an extension there as well. This is a seventh again here. And for the end, I had to change the chord progression. I couldn't stay on six, seven, one. She lands on note six, this F. And that is not an extension of one. So I chose to move to chord four there to support this. So we end up doing a six, seven, four. And I go back to seven because she's on a B here. And then when she resolves down to the one, we repeat the progression over again. You'll hear that change here. So four instead of the usual one. You can think of that as our own question and answer scenario within the chord progression. So don't be afraid to deviate, but be aware it can be overdone. If every one of your chords ends up being different to support different notes over 16 bars, you're not going to end up with a very hooky track. Listeners still need some kind of structure to latch onto, and your progression is definitely part of that structure, in certain genres, of course. So in other words, trying to create a progression which works with most of the vocals most of the time. Only deviate when you absolutely need to. Okie dokie. I think that's enough chord talk for one evening. Not to mention I've done about 500 takes. <laughs> so we're going to leave it there. I uh, hope you learned something. You know what to do if you did. Leave me a like, leave me a sub, or leave me a comment. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Oh,